Doctor, come and take the offering for us this morning. Oh, we should have Sadie do it. <laughs> we'll do all. She's too much like Samantha. She put the money in her pocket and headed for the door. <laughs> come on, baby. Set apart and 
and sanctified. You can plug them up now. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Come on. You'd sing to her three more. I love it when Joey said that she was. <laughs> and like you said, you don't get more spiritual by missing church. It just seems like it gets harder, you get lower. And we've all got things that we go through and things that get you down. And what you go through, I might think, is small, but what I go through is big to me. And what you're going through can be a big chore to you. But God knows all about it. He knows where you're at. He knows just what you're going through, and, and He knows the intentions of your heart. Amen. And I'm thankful that at the end of this journey that I will stand before him and, and I'm glad that he's going to be able to look at me, Dave, and he's going to know me from the top of my head <laughs> to the soul of my Amen. feet. Right. And it won't matter what no one else says. Right. Amen. The only thing that's going to matter in that day is what you've done for God. Amen. Amen. And you won't fool him, man. You might can fool me and I might can fool you, but the master will not be fooled. Amen. 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 I'm thankful that I'm serving someone who's just, amen, who is all-knowing, yeah. amen, he has the wisdom, amen, of Solomon, and much, much more, amen, he has the cattle of a thousand hills, yeah. amen, but he's a God of mercy, amen, he can look down and do anything that he wanted, I imagine he could be cruel if he wanted to, but he looks down at such a small, pitiful people, and he chooses, amen, to put up all the love upon us. I'm so thankful to be serving someone like that. Amen. He looks at you in your weakest moment. Amen. When he could look down upon you with some type of disgust. Amen. Amen. But he looks upon us and he has mercy. Amen. And all we do is call out to him. Amen. Realize that we fall day by day. Amen. But God Amen. knows where you're at. Amen. And if you put your heart before him, then God, he'll give you the keys. Thank God. All you gotta do is lock your eyes and And when the world gets to be to where you can bear it, friend, he's already born a rose. Yes, and he's glad to die and he rose from the dead. And then he says, You follow after him. That he's went to prepare a place for all those that will seek him. Amen. Thank God. He's got a place prepared for you and I. Bless the Lord. Oh, you've got to follow after the man named Jesus. There's only one name that will get us there. Amen. The very cross. Amen. The man is walking on water. The man in turn. Thank God, water into wine. Amen. And God, he spread himself out. That's something that they were yes, saying. Amen. No doubt a little bit more rugged than this next finished piece. Amen. But he spread his arms out. And he looked Amen. upon the world. I'm glad to be serving the Master, the Master of Mercy. Bless the Lord. I'll read out a book of Luke. If God will help me. Amen. You know, Bless the Lord. I'm going to start off here in the 23rd chapter. Just read a couple verses and take my message. Amen. Hey, but... <laughs> it says here, it starts at the verse 7. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, talking about Pilate, he said he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, amen, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had amen. heard many things of him and hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Amen. This day followed after Christ, Yep. Looking for nothing but loaves and fishes, amen. Yep. There's many that followed after Christ, yep. amen. And maybe they were looking for some of the benefits, amen, that would trail and be by him. Yep. Amen. When you walk after the master, you can just apply his rules to your
your life, you can take something as simple and apply the rules of the Ten Commandments to your life. Amen. And most of our lives will somewhat flourish because God puts out an honest way. Amen. And it will cause a country to grow. Amen. But Herod was not looking at man for that that you and I need applied to our hearts. Amen. Amen. He was a man of sinful nature. Amen. Amen. He was looking at Jesus to want to see a miracle. Amen. And I'll read to you how the Bible says that him and Pilate, amen, they made friends together and Herod with this men of war. They took Jesus and they set him at dawn. In other words, they set him off and then to the side and they mocked him and made fun of him and they arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. Amen. And then the Bible says in the same day, <laughs> Pilate and Herod yes, were made amen. friends together from before they were at enmity between themselves. And I thought this morning I was reading that how ironic it was to sinful men, amen, so close to the door they could have chose the breath of life for the day, but instead they turned their back upon the Son of God. Amen. They chose, thank God, the world, if you will. Herod and Pilate become great friends, had the ability to let go of the master, the one that brought them very blood of life. They could have saved free, amen. Thank God. That's good me.
and give us that that we need. Yes, Amen. So Bless the Lord. Too long ago, he said, I don't understand how they can look at this world and still believe that there's some grandfather up there in the sky, a man that looks down and some God, in other words. But I'll be honest with you, the farther I get down this journey, I don't see how someone can look at something so beautiful and not think that there's someone that created this for us, this wonderful earth, and how it sits just so far from the sun, just a little bit farther or a little bit closer, amen, if civilization would cease to exist. Amen. But oh, it's in the mighty hands of God amen. that keeps the whole thing going. Yes, just amen. inside of our body, I'm told, there are 3.2 billion bits of information that have to go one past the other. Like, so ahead amen, to have Brother designed Brother. our human bodies to do as they were. But to break it down just a little simpler, amen, if we walk upon a beach, amen, and I know you've probably heard this before, and you see a sand castle on that beach, no doubt, if no one was around and all you saw was that sand castle, just a little child would look at that and say, someone made a sand castle there. But all oh, we look at this world and we think that it created itself somehow. But I'm glad that the elect go and the elect are those that have been called by Christ. Amen. The Bible says that God will reveal himself amen, to the humble. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. From the wise and the fruit. Amen. 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 Lord bless you. <clears throat> I'm going to go back a couple chapters here to Luke chapter 20 and just read a few verses there and we will close. That's good preaching. But I thought if you read this whole chapter, I mean, how did they, they brought these questions to Jesus. Amen. And they weren't, they were like Herod, you Amen. might say. How that he wanted to see a miracle. Yep. Amen. But he didn't want to see the yep. Lamb of God. Yep. Amen. The Savior yep. of the world. Amen. Amen. And these men came to Jesus with these questions. Amen. To try and tempt him. Amen. To try and trick him. Amen. But you can't trick the very Son of God. Right. Amen. Right. They brought in these Amen. questions. Amen. With the wrong spirit, you might say. But when we come to Christ, and I know I don't have to tell anybody to hear this, but when we come to Christ, if we come in before him with an honest heart, yep. he will Amen. give us the keys yep. to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 20, start off at verse 20. And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves, amen, pretend, in other words, to be just men, amen, that they might take hold of his words, that so they might deliver him unto the power and the authority of the governor. Amen. That's all they were after. Amen. And you can read here, I meant, I meant to read how in the, in the 23rd chapter, the first one or two verses, when they did present him, amen, to Pilate, they said he did not want to render unto Caesar that which was Caesar's. Amen. They were false accusers to the master. Amen. Let me, let me read that real quick because I'm going to try to make a point out of it. You know, got to turn to it. But in the 23rd chapter, the first one or two verses, I'm sorry, I know there's only a couple people here. I don't want to wear you. But it says, The whole multitude of them rose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forgetting to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ the King. Amen. And I'm going to read to you here just a minute how that they lie upon the Master. Amen. They presented amen. him on a pilot and under a lie, amen. So when someone tells a lie on you, friend, don't think that you're the first one that's ever been accused, amen, of a lie being told on. Don't feel so sorry for yourself that you just weep up, amen, and get down upon and, and crawl away with your tail between your legs. They've been lying on the Christian faith ever since Christ. They yeah, lie to Christians all the time. Amen. Lord, amen. Right. But true. make sure that that lie is not true. Amen. And the very one in heaven will see it. Bless him, Lord. And they asked him, saying, Master, we know that thou sayest and teachest rightly. Neither acceptest thou... I'm back in chapter 20 now. I'm sorry. Now, neither acceptest thou the person of any, but teachest the way of God truly. Now here these men, they can speak to Jesus and, and just... And, and you see people like this. They can tell the lie, a, a lie just like it's the truth. It yeah. rolls right off their tongue. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And it doesn't even seem like it faces oh, them. No. And when you point it out to them, 
Amen. That they're telling a lie. And don't faze them still there. This has been going around ever since Christ's day. And that's Amen. what these people were doing here. Then they asked him. They said, is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness and said unto them, why tempt ye me? See, he knew that how he answered this question was going to go back. Yep. And if he would have said it's not lawful to give tribute unto Caesar, then they'd have ran to the Roman authorities immediately yep. and said, yep. this man's teaching that we shouldn't even have to pay tribute unto yep. you. Yep. Amen. Amen. But they also thought that they could trick him. And if he did say that um, you were not to pay tribute unto Caesar, well, then they were going to run back to the temple and say, look, he's preaching that we should be giving our money over to a sinful nation. So they were trying to put Jesus in a no-win situation. On the spot. And he says unto them, why tempt ye me? Show me a penny. Whose image is the prescription hath it? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's. And unto God the things which be God's. Amen. But I thought the thought that I got out of that, amen, is that I, as I've read this a few weeks back. Amen, the thought that I got out of that, Brother Dave, is they should have asked a different question. They should have asked, amen, with an intent, amen, and he might have told them whose image, amen, is upon you, amen. You and I are made in the very image of God, yeah, and that image that is upon you, friend, is what we should offer ourselves unto you. Yeah. We should offer ourselves not unto Caesar, not unto the government, amen, but offer yourself unto the master, yep. the one that created you, amen, the one that gave all that he had one day, amen, right. all his life's blood so that we could be purified and make it into his kingdom. Yep. I'm glad of him tonight. I'm glad to, to be served him. I know maybe that wasn't the, the greatest message or whatever, yep. but I'm still yep. thankful, yep. amen, that he's alive upon the throne. Now, I know sometimes we can get discouraged. You look around and you, you don't understand, amen, the, these Antifa movements and stuff, and, and it, it seems like just, just like they were before Christ. And they, they had all the answers right there. They could have asked him anything. They, right. they could have asked him, how do I get into this kingdom of God? What can I do? What Amen. can me personally? Could you think of all the questions, amen, that you might ask if you were standing before the feet of Jesus? Yeah. But what a wasted opportunity, amen, right. that it was. Yeah. Amen. Amen. They wanted something from the enemy. Herod and Pilate chose to make friends together when they could have made the friend of the master. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And he could have been the best friend that they could have ever had. Amen. I always hope to choose Jesus. Amen. In my life. Pray for me as I do. Let us will. Amen. Lord bless